Alright Ambitions fans, this is the episode review for Season 1, Episode 16, Hit em Up, 9 out of 10. I thought it was a great episode. Uh, this was part of the two-hour event Ambitions did on Tuesday night, so let's just jump into it. Uh, we have Stephanie's father, Stephen Carlisle, and Stephanie talking about the good job she did on the rebranding of Greg Peters' company. But Stephanie is still on fire about Peters due to the fact that her father-in-law is still dead. But her father reassures her that the killer will be going down really fast, really soon. Uh, we switch gears over to Rondell and Evan, and they're talking about the fact that Evan's lawyers are doing their best to contest Senior's will. But the chief of police comes in to let them know a arrest has been made in the murder of their father, uh, Cairo Winston, who was actually from their neck of the woods back in the day, and he has admitted to the murder. However, both of them are still not convinced, and they think that Peters had something to do with the murder. And if the chief of police can't do anything uh, in order to arrange a meeting between Cairo and Evan, he'll go above her in order to make that meeting happen. Uh, Mara and Titus are talking about, you know, their uh, events that's been going on. Titus still fighting a good fight at Purifoy. And Amara telling Titus about the fact that off the book, she brought an FBI agent with her to go see Damien. Titus doesn't like that, but Amara wanted to make sure that Stephanie had something to do with Damien coming after her in the first place. So that's something that she needed to find out for herself. Next thing you know, we have Pella and Bella talking. Bella is fuming at the fact that Pella had, tell, had told Evan about Ignacio. And then, of course, Evan put the pieces together that their child was taken while she was busy sleeping around with Valentina's son. But Pella says it slipped out, but then also says, I said it that way you wouldn't look weak or like you're just sitting around waiting for Evan to come back. So Bella, tired of her lies and her running mouth, kicks her out saying, I got to run some errands. By the time I come back, you better be gone. Next thing you know, we have Stephanie and her dad once again talking about the whole Cairo Winston situation. And he admits to the fact that he was paid off to confess. However, she wants revenge on Natasha Peters no matter what. However, her dad shuts it down by saying that you need to learn how to play ball. Not to mention, you had a hand in her, his murder as well because of the fact that if you remember way back during like episode one and two when Stephanie had made it clear that she wants to take her father's place, but he says she wasn't ready, she ended up whining and dining his clients behind what like, um you know, Stephen's business partners and other clients behind his back in order to kind of bring them over to her side. He makes a valid point. If Stephanie hadn't have done all that, there may have been a chance that things would have worked out without anyone dying. Now, yes, I didn't blame Stephanie fully for Senior's death because he did. she did have that guard watching over Rondell and Senior, but she told him to get away. But also, if she hadn't have tried to usurp her father's position and his clients, then this situation may not have gotten out of hand. So I'm just saying that. I mean, that's up for you to decide. But then we move over to Hunter and Titus, and we have the board meeting going down. And he tells Titus that he doesn't want to settle. And he pretty much goes along with, you know, remember, I, I'm the one that put you in this position. Now I can get you out of it just as easily. Pretty much threatening him like, hey, if you don't play ball with me, then you're going to be out of here. But it seemed like Titus was agreeing with what Hunter was saying in regards to, you know what, we're not going to settle and this thing is going to blow over. But the board meeting doesn't agree, but then he switches gears. But in my professional opinion, I think it will be best for us to settle now in order to at least save what reputation of the company there still is. Later on, when uh, Hunter uh, Hunter comes into uh, Titus's office, I think he like, you know, rushes stuff off the desk, just knocks stuff off the desk. And uh, I love how chill Titus is, you know, for the fact that you have this fall corn. Look, I love Hunter's persona believe it or not because he his demeanor reminds me of foghorn leghorn from looney tunes like i say boy i say i know it's demeaning but at the same time i found it funny not and i'm black remember i just find it funny but in any case he's like if it wasn't for the board backing you out fire your ass right now but later on in the episode there's going to be a meeting between steve and stephanie and titus and hunter so that's going to be a big showdown later in the episode. Ignacio comes over to Bella and Bella has been calling out people for their bullshit back and forth. She pretty much lets him know that I know everything about you, how your mother has dementia, how your brother Martin is the one that has all the power and you could do nothing for me. Nothing for me. Ignacio tries to say that his brother is the, the one who's manipulative and the um, person that doesn't 
play ball correctly. He pretty much, you know, does stuff under the table. But Bella has already been in contact with Martin and has his support 100%, and Ignacio is kicked out. Next thing you know, we have Evan and Steven. Steven's pretty much just saying that, hey, I'm happy that the killer of your father has been arrested. He admitted to it. Now we can hopefully move forward. But Evan doesn't buy it for a second. And I like the little key detail of the fact that Evan was playing around with that uh, random piece of um, the random chess piece that I believe Rondell had found when, um, you know, she was sweeping up Thelma's place. Or it could have been the chess piece because Evan probably has a chess board and set in his office, so if his father comes to visit, they can play a friendly game. So, you know, Steven's pretty much still talking about the whole concession stand thing and, you know, is trying to get Evan to see, just to see, have Evan see eye to eye with where he's coming from and how to look at the bigger picture, but Evan isn't having it. He calls in his security team to take Steven out, and that's the end of that. We have Greg and Natasha having another stand standoff scene where he's telling her that it's time to go. But next thing you know, Stephanie barges in, just barely missing Natasha because she was ready to go on the uh, warpath. But Greg holds her back. And pretty much Stephanie lays down the ultimatum that, you know what, she's the one that needs to watch out for me. So then we have Daphne confessing to Amara about everything involving the whole Herschel Cooper situation, as well as all the dirty dealings that Mayor Lancaster, I mean, Mayor... Mayor Lancaster has been into, but wouldn't give up Greg Peters. And once again, Essence Atkins just killed this scene. Amara, she gives like the best performances in these episodes. Like her demeanor as someone working for the federal government is incredible. But basically she chews out Daphne saying like, haven't you learned by now? If you protect the Peters, they won't protect you. You almost got killed by Natasha twice. Fine. Don't want to talk. I'll give you more time to think about it, but you better not leave Atlanta. Then she goes to her car, and I was honestly waiting for someone to pop out of the backseat and kill her at any point. But she calls Greg Peters, and he pretty much instructed her to do exact to say exactly what she said to Amara, and says like, "So did you call your cousin off? Goodbye, Daphne." But we don't know what happened, so I'm going to assume Daphne's still alive for now. And after this, we go over to Amara coming home from a long, stressful day, as well as Titus. And she pretty much talks about how Daphne didn't really give her anything to bring down Peters, but they're still working on bringing down the Lancasters. So next thing you know, the mayor pops up on TV, pretty much disconnecting himself to anything related to Daphne, saying that she's the one who's been dealing with things under the table, not him. And that pretty much sets back Amara and Karen's plan by a lot. So we go over to Thelma's place after hours, and I think the music and the craziness downstairs was so loud Pictures from the wall were falling down on Rondella. She was sleeping. Darcy is the one, you know, holding all the money. They're having a big, good time downstairs playing cards, rolling dice, drinking, smoking. But she comes down for Papa Shotgun and clears out the place. And they have a moment where Rondell is pretty much asking his thing, are things that bad? Do you feel so much hatred towards my brother for not helping you out after your father died that you want to just come ruin Thelma's place? And she says that 500000 isn't enough. She wants a million dollars, and then she'll up and leave Atlanta. So then we go over to Stephanie and Stephen versus Titus and Hunter. And before going in there, Stephen's like, we're not going to settle for anything less than, what was it, $1.25 or $1.5 billion. So they go into the meeting. Stephanie immediately says $5 billion, and her dad is like, what the? So after a lot of arguments, we learned that Steven was actually the original Titus, the original, um, what was it, the general attorney? the Basically, the uh, legal representation for Pure Ford Company. But basically, when things kind of went south, they, pro they tried to throw Steven under the bus to take the fall. Kind of like what Evan did to Daphne, if, if you need an example. And he pretty much lost everything, his reputation, his license. But he pretty much started another grunt job in another law firm until he can climb up the ranks in order to take Purifoy down. So after those two leave and it's just Stephanie and Titus, they agree on a $2.5 billion settlement. So she ended up getting her father over a billion dollars more than he originally wanted. Then we go back to Thelma's place. The chief of police comes by to give Rondell the belongings that were left on Senior's person. And, um, you know, Rondell's obviously a little choked up over this. We're talking like the phone, the engagement ring and whatnot. 
And uh, next thing you know, we have Natasha and Greg. Her thugs take her away because Greg's father was not happy to hear about all Natasha's dealings that have led to the Peters family being brought under scrutiny and a magnifying glass by federal government agencies. So she's being shipped back to Siberia and her Greg's father will take care of her personally. So that's why I said earlier in this review, Daphne might still be alive because if Natasha is being dealt with, then I doubt Daphne is going to, I mean, Daphne is going to be taken out by Natasha. We'll have to wait and see, but it might be another Peters or another thug. Who knows? Then we go back to um, Greg Peters going over to Stephanie's office and they talk about, she talks about how they can't be together due to their fathers. It's almost like a, a swirl version of Romeo and Juliet, but they end up having sex anyway. Damien is watching, and then we finally see that the one bodyguard of Evan who found out about Pella taking uh, Joaquin tries to force himself on her and ends up getting killed. And that's the end of the episode. So overall, 9 out of 10. I thought this episode was really good. Uh, check out my episode review of episode 17 through the wire. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new content. And I'll catch you all in the next video.